Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to Lee's Stuff, uh, my stuff, where I basically try to tell you how to cure some problems, things that uh, I've found with uh, some of my clients asking questions or issues that I've kind of run into. And uh, today we're talking about uh, Outlook 2010. Specifically, I'm running the beta version, although this kind of works with any of their 2010 versions and uh, how to possibly correct some of the issues you have with send and receive errors and you'll see down here I've already got one and specifically when it has to do with live or hotmail accounts now but many people have been complaining that they keep getting these kind of weird bizarre send and receive messages uh, error messages and uh, how they can possibly correct them and actually mine uh, cleared itself but it will come back I guarantee you uh, and how do we get rid of these things? And I'm going to do a send and receive here just so that uh, we'll, we'll see one more than likely. But uh, unfortunately, the send and receive errors are typically not very helpful. The errors themselves are not very productive. They don't tell us exactly what's wrong. But I can tell you that a lot of times uh, it's one of two things, and I'm going to talk about one of them right now. And there we go. I did get a send and receive error. And it, uh, this one it basically tells you that there's an error synchronizing your mail account and to check it by logging in online but that kind of doesn't really help you it doesn't tell you exactly what's gone on here so I'm going to tell you how to figure that out hopefully we can cure some of these problems uh, this is a rather long video but I am going to tell you before we do anything here while I'm probably 80 percent sure that you're not going to damage anything by doing this uh, and I've never damaged anything or lost anything by doing this I can tell you it always pays to back up. So if you're afraid that you're going to lose something, you're worried that you might lose something, stop this video and back up your data first. Make sure that you do that just in case. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and continue here. But first of all, how do you really find out what's going on? There, These errors are here, but how do you really know what they are or if you really even have any that are kind of stockpiling? Well, I'm going to show you. First of all, uh, in in the uh, Windows Outlook 2000 uh, uh, window, you'll see that there are several different uh, buttons here that are available to kind of quickly jump between mail, calendar, contacts, and so on. But one of the things that people don't realize is that there is this one button here called a folder list. And I know this is probably going to be just outside your view, but if you don't see that folder list button, click this little down arrow and go to add and remove buttons and I know just outside of your view here there is one called folder list it looks just like this one here uh, but if you add that and then click on it you're going to see that all of a sudden you now have a folder called sync issues now this can build up now I only have nine of them but I can tell you that this can build up to some huge numbers I've had a couple hundred in here uh, and you don't even know they're there until you click on that button and you see that they're actually existing here. And if you scroll down, it'll maybe show you something like this says that there's an error, but it also says everything's done and it's fine. So what's happening? Why is it this is showing you different things and, and different errors all the time? Well, of course, some of them are the same, but a lot of times they'll be totally different. So how do you figure that out? Well, first of all, close this by clicking on mail we're just going to click on mail and I'll, I'll go back in here and, and uh, you'll see that that folder is gone but uh, obviously we still have the syncing issue so how do we get around that okay so here's how you do it uh, if you are, are looking essentially at uh, your any of the the information here in your account as long as you're clicked on any of these uh, options in your account any of these folders on your account and you go to the junk option here and go to junk email options you're gonna see that there are several different tabs but the ones that you're concerned about here are these three there's safe senders safe recipients and blocked senders okay so first of all the, the two main ones that you really need to be concerned about I'm not too worried about safe recipients you can kinda of sort of leave this here and, and unless there's more than one it's really not a big issue but if you look at your safe senders, you're going to have lots of them. These are all people that you know are good, and, and typically you'll you'll be able to, to send and receive mail from safely. You know who these people are. But then there's the blocked ones that are usually built by uh, marking something as junk email. But the problem is sometimes there are duplicates. Both of these lists have an address in them that are the same. But how in the heck are you going to go through here and find all of the, out of all of this, this listing, 
which ones are duplicates. It'll take you forever to do that. And if you just simply delete them, like many of the help uh, messages or help articles on the web tell you to do, then you have to go back and rebuild this again. And so it's a real pain in the rear to make that happen. So I'm going to tell you how to make that work easily. First of all, let's uh, work with the block senders tab. Let's export this to a file, and I'm just going to dump it on my desktop here, and I'm going to say uh, it's going to be called uh, badsenders.txt. And I just did this, so it's probably going to say, hey, it's already there. You want to replace it? Yeah. And in this case, uh, I'm going to go back over to the Safe Senders tab when I'm done there and say export to a file. And I'm going to say uh, safe senders.txt. And I'm going to save that one. So now I've saved a file for bad senders and for safe senders. Okay, so now with both of those saved, we'll just go ahead and click on OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up uh, our Excel program here. And just need a blank workspace or, or uh, workbook, uh, a blank uh, page. And I'm going to open up the safe senders list. And I'm going to just copy all of these. I'll close it. And I'm going to paste it into this first column. Okay, then I'm going to go all the way down to the end of this first column, go to the next blank cell, and I'm going to open up the bad senders. And I'm going to copy those, and then I'm going to paste it from the next open cell down. So now we have one long list of both our bad and our good senders, right? So now, how do we know which one of these is a duplicate? Well, real simple. If you go into the Styles tab here, or the Styles area here, under your Home tab, and you go to Conditional Formatting, Highlight Cell Rules, and say Duplicate Values. Once I do that, it'll just say, OK, format the cells that contain duplicate values and give them a color. It kind of doesn't really matter as long as you can see it and say OK. So now if I scroll down the list here, eventually we're going to hit one. And there it is. There's one that's, that's highlighted. And that is within my good senders list because I can tell I started off uh, with A through Z and there's the ending of that. And 114 is where my bad senders are. Scroll down and there's the one that's in the bad senders list. Well, the question then becomes, do I want to delete it from the bad senders or the good senders? Well, I know that this one actually is valuable. It is actually a good sender. <clears throat> so it, it ended up in the bad senders list by mistake, and that's unfortunately very easy to do in Outlook. If you mark something bad by mistake and then you mark it good, it doesn't remove it from the bad sender. It just adds it to both lists. Well, on Hotmail, it doesn't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for, in my bad senders list, this email address and remove it because I know it's a good one. So I'll go back in here. I'll go to Junk email options, my block senders list, scroll down to the V's, and there it is. I'm going to remove it. Okay, so now it's no longer in the block senders list or the bad senders list, but it is in the safe senders list. I'll say apply and then OK. And let's do this just to, to be sure that we're good to go. Let's uh, go ahead and clear any errors that we already have. They're already gone, so we're good there. So let's do another send and receive to see if we're, we're good to go. And now the uh, error should not appear. If it does, it's something different. <laughs> but of course, as many of us know that we're using hot, hot mail or live accounts in Outlook 2010, uh, that's very, very common. And voila, we have no more error. So let's do it one more time just to be sure. I just want to make sure that uh, we don't have that. But that's very common, and unfortunately, the error doesn't tell you that there's a problem with uh, somebody in both lists. So let's see if that goes away. Yep, there we go. And now we've got no more error. So everything should be fine. Now you can go back and close this list. You don't really need it. It's uh, not useful for you. It was only just to find that value. So hopefully that will cure some of your issues. Uh, if you have any other questions or comments, any other concerns, please feel free to post them to the channel. I'll try to get to them or someone will uh, answer you and we'll see if we can't solve your problem. Okay, enjoy. Take care.